well, a headline in today's New York Sun, for those that read it, captures it. Ramaswamy, without Trump's shadow on the stage, dominates the GOP debate. Big buzz. Here he joins us. Vivek Ramaswamy, 2024 presidential candidate, founder of Strive Asset Management, author of Nation of Victims. Vivek, you did good last night. Uh, those of us who know you were not at all surprised. I want to start out with one of my favorite parts, your defense of something called the nuclear family. I think you captured a lot here. Just take a listen. I know you've heard it because you said it, but I want the uh, viewers to hear it. Here's Vivek on the nuclear family. Well, you know what? I did have the ultimate privilege of two parents in the house with a focus on educational achievement. And I want every kid to enjoy that. So part of the problem is we also have a federal government that pays single women more not to have a man in the house than to have a man in the house, contributing to an epidemic of fatherlessness. And I think that goes hand in glove with the education crisis as well, because we have to remember education starts with the family and the nuclear family is the greatest form of governance known to mankind. You know, Vivek, it may be politically incorrect, but I happen to think you're 100, 1000 percent correct. You've just put your finger on it. And I think that's one of the reasons there's such a big buzz for you today. What you thinking about this? You're going to stay with this theme? I am. I've been staying with this theme the entire campaign, Larry, because it's personal to me. I grew up with privilege, not money privilege, because my parents didn't come to this country with any money but with the ultimate privilege of two parents in the house with a focus on educational achievement. That was my ticket to get ahead. And yes, as a father to my two sons, I want to give them that same privilege. But as the next president, I want to lead a country where every kid in this country gets that same opportunity too. And it's not like the federal government can create that. A lot of that has to come from culture. But the federal government can stop making the problem worse by literally paying and using taxpayer dollars to pay people across this country to do the exact opposite of what we should want them doing. We have anti-family incentives in this country. That is the real form of systemic inequality. You could call it, that's the equivalent of systemic racism that we should be talking about. The crisis of fatherlessness, 25% of kids being born into houses without a father in the house. That's what explains supposed racial inequalities and otherwise. And you're right, it is politically incorrect. But this campaign is all about speaking the hard truths that we have to actually acknowledge in order to fix this country. And, you know, I thought also, um, look, thank you for that. Uh, I thought also, you know, you had the courage to go against Biden's climate change craziness. It's just absolutely crazy. You know, look, Trump is good on this, too. You're good on this. Um, this is, you know... The rise in energy prices permeates the entire economy. I'm not sure people understand that. I mean, there's hundreds of That's items right. in the CPI that are affected by the shortage of oil and gas and coal that has come from Biden's uh, policies. And I think um, I don't think a lot of the others got that message across, but I think you got that message across. You're going to stay with that, too. I am. And this is. Passion, that's something I'm incredibly passionate about, Larry. The climate change agenda has actually nothing to do with the climate and everything to do with letting China catch up to the United States. If it had to do with the climate, then you would have to address this mystery of why the people who are opposed to carbon emissions in the United States, telling Exxon and Chevron to emit less carbon, are the same people who will not say a peep when PetroChina does the same thing. By the way, the biggest opponents to fossil fuels are also the biggest opponents to nuclear energy. Mm. Eight times as many people die of cold temperatures than warm ones. And there is a 98 percent reduction in the climate disaster related death rate, tornadoes, heat waves, etc., due to advances powered by fossil fuels. But you've so got I say, yes, drill, frack, burn coal, do it without apology. That's part of what we're going to need to revive our economy. Just in recent days or the last week, you've got a couple of Nobel Prize winners. One of them in, what is it, quantum mechanics. I'm not even sure I understand what that means. But they've come out and said that this whole climate thing is a, is a, is a hoax. They just called it a hoax. 
and that uh, Biden has done more harm than good because he's preventing economic growth, not only here, but in less developed countries or in Africa, too. I mean, they're doing enormous damage to this. The, thing, the other thing is, promise me you're going to stay with the strong dollar and tax cuts, right? I want, you know me. I want growth. Absolutely. I want prosperity. I want, you know, I want to make America great again, Vivek. And you know what? We are more united as a country when everybody is making more money in this country. Larry, we have a crisis of national pride amongst young Americans. Less than 16 percent of Gen Z says they're even proud of this country. But young people are going to be more proud of this country when they're economically prospering in this country. So I am unapologetically the pro-growth candidate in this race. Unlock American energy. Put people back to work by no longer paying them more to stay at home. Strive for dollar stability as the single mandate of the Fed. That's one of the tickets to economic growth. And the top war that I will wage as U.S. president isn't going to be some foreign war that doesn't advance American interests. It is going to be the war on the administrative regulatory state right here at home. Those three letter agencies that are the source of what I believe are unconstitutional mm. federal regulations that act like a wet blanket on the U.S. economy. And yes, simplifying the tax code, a simple flat tax is an important part of that reform as well. Vivek, this is a respectful question. It's not a cheeky one. If you don't get the nomination okay. and if you don't become president, is there a cabinet department that you would like to run that you could tear apart and get rid of the uh, D.C. swamp? If you don't make it, what, which department would you like to tear apart? Well, there's, I, I have too much desire for tearing down the administrative state that effectively I need to tear down most of it. And I need to get in there and fire 75 percent of the headcount in Washington, D.C., and I think this is one of the areas where I'm able to learn the lessons that Trump did, but to go further. What they told Trump, and you might have been there for part of this to see it, Larry, is that you couldn't fire people in the administrative state because of civil service protections. Mm. The reality is I think we need a president who understands the law and the Constitution deeply so as not to be duped by those advisors. Because read the law. Those civil service protections only protect against individual firings. They do not protect right. against mass right. layoffs. Right. And mass layoffs are exactly what I will bring to the D.C. bureaucracy. So I have to be the next president in order to be able to see that through and reach the next generation. And I will tell you this, Larry, is, you know, as I said on the stage last night, I think Trump was the greatest president of the 21st century. I want him as my top advisor, dare I say it, as a mentor to help me succeed in waging that war on the administrative state. But if I'm to unite this country, it has to be from the top office reach young Americans, bring them along, win this election in a landslide with a multi-ethnic working class majority. I'm the only candidate in this race who I think can actually deliver that landslide. All right. Well, you're all the buzz, Vivek Ramaswamy. You had a great night last night. We appreciate you coming back on the show. You and I will talk soon. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank all right, you. folks. Joining me now, we're going to switch gears. Uh, we got our pal Greg Jarrett, Fox